It's Spacey Sims, and we are back with more Taisho Alice, and we are just picking up where we left off after being, I don't know, like, attempted murder by Grotto. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, but here we are, waking up in a hospital, obviously, so. There's our brother staring at us, our other brother. Ryoshi? I woke in a hospital room. Is this a dream? Or is this real life? Hey, Spacey, you all right? What happened? I heard there was an emergency, so I hurried home and found you passed out on the floor. And then I called an ambulance. Who told you? I got a call from the cops, actually. And they said they received an anonymous tip that a group of local thugs jumped you. That anonymous tip probably came from Red. I think Red and the Huntsman have the same voice, but whatever. He must have called him in. He must have called it in after he left my house. Where's Gretel? He wasn't there when I found you. I imagine he's probably out somewhere trying to exact vigilante justice. He gave you a mixture of sedatives and anti-anxiety pills. If he'd miscalculated the dose even slightly, he could have killed you. Okay, it was just sedatives. It's fine. For the time being, stay here and get some rest. I'll find him. Ryoshi, you haven't told... The police? Not yet. Normally it makes sense to get them involved, but not under these circumstances. Thank you. Wordlessly, Ryoshi stroked my hair, then got up and left the room. He's wearing a doctor jacket, though. I think feel like he's a doctor, but anyway. Battling with the pain and fatigue, I forced myself upright. I looked around for any helpful information, but all I could tell was that I had spent close to 24 hours here in this hospital room. I had only been treated for my external injuries, no stomach pump that I could see. Outside the window, the sun was starting to set. I mean, I'm assuming Ryoshi's a doctor because he's wearing a doc like a lab coat. But also, if it was anybody else, they would have been like... First of all, he knew about the sedatives and all that. And if, the, uh, if he's not a doctor and the doctors knew about that, they would have pumped my stomach or would have been on the form. He knows and nobody... You know what I mean? So... He's obviously, like, i covering it up, so good for him. Anyway. Outside the window, the sun was starting to set. I needed to find Gretel before it got dark. That way we could go home together. Spurred forward by impulse, I jumped to my feet. Girl. She crazy. <sighs> Having managed to escape the hospital, I found myself wandering through the forest. Night had fallen and all was dark. A distinctly bad feeling descended over me. Hurry. Hurry. I have to find him before Ryoshi does. I knew Ryoshi was only worried for his safety, but if he got to Gretel before I did, he would lock him up again. And this time, it might actually destroy him completely. Just then, I caught a whiff of alcohol on the breeze. Alcohol? But it wasn't just alcohol. There was an indescribably horrid stench mixed in as well. I came to a stop and overheard some voices. Male voices. Sniffling. And very familiar laughter. I told you I'm done hitting you. Did you know? The higher the alcohol content, the more flammable the liquid. Want to test it out? <laughs> I could see several figures deep in the woods. Then a tiny orange light flared up, illuminating the very person I had been searching for. Is he going to burn them alive? Jesus Christ, Gretel. At his feet lay a group of youths, all of them bleeding heavily. Please just stop. Y you've made your point. Never. You demon. You're the demons here. You tried to devour my sister. So now it's time to take the trash to the incinerator. Burn in hell. Maggots. Okay, he is fucking... Like ridiculously goddamn insane, but I don't... I kind of like it a little. We're also a little fucking crazy. We're a little obsessed with him, so I mean, we kind of work well together. I'm not gonna lie. Stop! Just in the nick of time, I managed to wrap my arms around him from behind. We're not trying to protect... We're not trying to stop... Stop! Don't kill them! How could you do that? It's like, don't! They'll send you to jail! <laughs> We don't care about those fucks. We care about Gretel not, like, getting punished for killing these assholes. If we thought he could get away with it, we'd be like, burn him. <laughs> it's fucking brilliant. 
I mean, God. See, I think part of why I can handle Gretel being psychotic... Okay, I mean, again, I have their triggering moments where he's, like, dissing my sex appeal and shit. Like, bitch, whatever. But she is in love with him and is kind of obsessive. Oh, yeah. I had to walk him to school and I gotta be with him and, like, I love him and, like, she's a little clingy fucking needy and at first it was like, well, you're a little clingy and weird with him because you're in love with him. That makes sense. So, like, I don't know if it's just because she's a little clingy and psycho herself over him that his crazy is like, it, it just doesn't bother me as much. Because other times it's like, you're a nice, sweet, innocent, and then this person's, like, really abusive and, like, awful to you. And she can give it back. She, like, like, it's not like she doesn't sit there. <laughs> I mean, he's, even when he's saying just verbally abusive things, like, she's not broken by it. She's like, oh, you dick. Like, you know what I mean? Like, she can handle it, which... Look, I don't think anyone should be able to handle someone being verbally or emotionally abusive with you. That's fucking bullshit. But when we're usually playing Gretel's kind of route, right? Someone like that. It, the MC is always like a doormat who's like too frick, too fucking nice. Okay? And like, oh, and he's so mean and maybe he's right, I kid. And it's like, oh my God, grow a spine and punch this dick in the face. Better yet, give him a nut punch. Punch this dick in the dick. But, like, she is, like, a little fucking cray-cray, too. So I feel like it doesn't bother me as much because she can handle his... Like, he's crazy. She's a little crazy. Not as crazy as he is, but they, like... I don't know. They work better. And I like that she's kind of adaptive depending on, like... That's what I like. I like that they're adaptive. Like, she's adaptive in to whoever. And it's not even... Because most MCs are very, this is your character. You're a doormat. It's basically it. You're a doormat. And everybody, like, sometimes they're really nice to you. Okay. And sometimes they're dicks. Okay. And sometimes they put you in a cage. Okay. And you're like, oh my fucking God, could you? And she just like, I don't know. Maybe that's part of it. But that's what makes this game really enjoyable, honestly. Like, First of all, the writing is fucking great. And the translation is just fucking beautiful. Like, they did an amazing motherfucking job, and I hope they keep localizing in, like, games. Like, I really hope they do. I will fucking throw money at them to do it, because they do it well. But, like, her character, like, just works better, I think. And maybe that's why it doesn't bother me so much. Could also just be, because, again, when we played the first game, I was like, I like Riley's. Oh, oh, you're a little bit of a dick, huh? Oh, you're going to be that one. Wow. Didn't see that coming, but okay. And now he's just completely and utterly psychotic, but hey, kind of not. I kind of don't hate it. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, just in the nick of time, I managed to wrap my arms around him from behind. Sister. Upon closer inspection, I noticed Gretel was injured in a few areas too. Gretel, you're bleeding. At this, he donned a dashing smile and wiped his bloody cheek with his sleeve. I wouldn't touch me if I were you. Who knows what manner of awful diseases you might catch from their filthy fluids. And don't worry, I'm going to incinerate all of the stinking trash right here and now. With that, he moved to light his match. No! I snatched at the matchstick from behind him. It slipped out of his fingers and fell to the ground. What are you doing? You made me waste it. Well, whatever. I have more where that came from. He pulled out another match. Please don't do this. Don't do what? Don't get justice for you. You have nothing to worry about. I won't make you the villain, I promise. I'm sorry, everyone. This is all my fault. Why are you apologizing to these worms, sister? They're the ones who hurt you. He kicked one of the delinquents lying at his feet. That's enough! I screamed at the top of my lungs. Again, I don't think we're worried about him. No, you can't kill people. It's, you're going to get in trouble if you kill people. We're worried about him, not the people he's going to kill. It's kind of funny. Enough already! Just stop! If you go any further, he'll die! Excuse me? Who gives a shit if he dies? 
These vermin will never contribute to society. They have no concept of right and wrong. They simply act on their own desires. They're literally worthless. <sighs> Silently, I shook my head. Tears streamed uncontrollably down my face. Why are you defending them? These creatures attacked you, remember? And they very nearly raped you. They hurt your body and scarred your precious soul. The damage could have been permanent, you know. But it wasn't. I'm fine now. Well, I'm not fine! The thought of my sister's abusers living happily ever after makes me want to puke! I'm begging you, please, just stop. I just want to go home with you. And if you cross that line, I... Sister. Right as he slumped his shoulders in defeat. Gretel! Gah. Suddenly, I felt the vibration of an impact against my arm as they clung to Gretel. I looked up to find that Ryoshi had seized Gretel by the collar, his eyes blazing. The hell do you think you're doing? Ryoshi! My beloved older brother had punched Gretel. What the hell are you doing here? I told you to get some rest, damn you! I had never seen Ryoshi this emotional in all my life. I shrank back. If you're going to yell at someone, yell at me. She braved these woods in order to find me. Gretel. Damn it, Gretel. Do you realize what you're about to do? You're about to commit murder. Yes, I know. What of it? Gretel is a cold motherfucker. I beg your pardon? His matter-of-fact demeanor sent a chill down my spine. Likewise, Ryoshi seemed to be at a loss for words. Then after a moment, he turned and approached the thugs on the ground. Screw it. The lecture will have to wait. Hey, you kids okay? Stay with me. Help me. I'm gonna call an ambulance for you. Seems like you're all still breathing. The delinquents had been rendered immobile, so Ryoshi tended to them as he prepared to call the hospital. What are you doing? You don't have to trouble yourself with these worms. Just let nature sort itself out. Not on your life! Yes, hello. I need an ambulance right away. Right, our current location. They tried to rape your little sister! It doesn't mean they deserve to die. And this is why Gretel kidnaps us. Maybe you don't care if they die. But these kids have families. Family. So I'm worth even less than these maggots? Is that it? Gretel! I mean, that's what it sounds like. After all, I don't have a family. I didn't need to be clued in either. I always knew we weren't related. Unlike you people, I'm not smart or talented. I'm just a worthless piece of trash. Poor fucking Gretel. I know he's a psychopath, but like, oh, you poor little thing, we love you. And like, our parents took you in and treated you like... And obviously he's not... Stupid. I'm not smart or talented. He is smart, though. Mm. That's why I put so much effort into everything I did. Schoolwork. Sports. I did everything I could to win approval from people as naturally perfect as you. Gretel. Shut up, shut up, shut up! I knew. I could just tell. Unlike you people, I wasn't skilled or gifted. Be it schoolwork or sports, I quietly put my nose to the grindstone until I got to where I am today. Okay, so he's smart because he studied hard. Okay, but still. I just wanted to catch up to my sister, to stay connected with her, so I crafted the perfect little brother. So why... Why are you people trying to destroy that? Sister. 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 You're the one person I can't afford to lose. Please don't abandon me. As he stood there, crying and covered in blood, I pitied him more than anyone else here. My actions had hurt him, and now they had caused him to hurt others. I could only think of one way to keep him from hurting even more. So I reached out and kissed him on the cheek. Sister? Then I gently took him by the hand and took off running. Yeah, we crazy just like he is. Like, we like two sides of a crazy coin. Hey, Spacey, Gretel. 
I could hear Ryoshi calling after us, but I didn't look back. I didn't need any guideposts to find my way home. Did he lock us up, or did we lock ourselves up? I'm just wondering, though. Because to me, that wasn't my home anymore. That would have been a twist I wouldn't have seen coming. The two siblings were lost in the woods, with only moonlight illuminating their path. With no trail of breadcrumbs, they would never find their way home again. So where do we go from here? Oh, I don't know. Look at us just leading Gretel by the hand. Such an adorable CG. But it'll work out. I'm going to keep you safe. Sister. Just then, a black cat appeared out of nowhere, swishing her tail as she trotted deeper into the forest. Is she trying to guide us? No clue. Every time we approached her, she ran off deeper into the woods. It's the wizard's cat, right? Ultimately, she led us to a small cottage. There, she paused to lounge on the roof for a moment. But when we walked up, she ran off again. What is this place? Welcome to Sweet Home. And so they arrived at the candy house. Was that a fucking ending? Or no, this is how we got... Okay, this is how we got here. But the weird thing is, is like... He has us tied up, but we ran away with him. <laughs> we can't be mad at him locking our asses up. We basically volunteered for this. We were like, I volunteer as tribute. I'll get in the cage. And then we just can't be mad about it. I mean... Gretel... One look at his tears and the fog cleared from my memories. His actions... My actions... He had thrown himself into the fires of hell just for me. You're the one person I can't afford to lose, sister. Your family was very kind for letting me stay with them. But I don't care if they hate me. I don't care if they reject me. But you... I don't want you to throw me away. And yet... Every time I look at you, I think to myself... What a delicious morsel. How I wish I could devour her. Uh, I think we want him to devour us, so... If he devoured me, it would mean the end of our relationship as siblings. Well, I mean, you could have... Look, if that's your kink, you could just pretend. I felt this way for a long, long time. But I bet you never knew, did you? Or is that why you did all those things? To provoke me? No, we wanted to bone you too. I mean... I... I think I love the fact that they're both fucking insane and obsessive over each other. It is like a fucking terrible, terrible real world relationship, but it makes this route so much more insane and crazy and like kind of fun. I'm not going to lie. Like, you're such a tease, sister. You're not safe for consumption. And yet you lure me in with your sweet scent. How cruel could you possibly be? I want to feast on you so badly. It's killing me inside. I'm starving, sister. This is so crazy. It's like, oh dear lord. It's a little creepy, but I... Part of me likes it. There's something wrong with me. I don't know. But you have to reject me, sister. And tell me we can't be together because we're family. Talk me out of it, sister. Persuade me not to. Sister. 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 Help me. Gretel. I was the one making him suffer. This was my punishment for falling in love with the man who was supposed to be my brother. In light of Gretel's... Gretel, in light of Gretel's suffering... Wow, I can't read. What will you do? Tell him to eat me. Tell him not to eat me. This is... Oh, God. Um... Well, here's the thing. I mean, I'm not sure what... Look, I don't know. The whole point of this is romancing him. So you'd think, tell him to eat... Well, go ahead and eat me. That sounds so fucking inappropriate. <laughs> More so than it actually is. Um, So you'd think that would be the point. But I have a feeling that maybe we're supposed to be like, no, don't. To, you know... But, and then the route goes on and like whatever. So I, this could be a bad thing. This could be bad. But I think I'm going to do it. Because. 
Like, either one... I mean, again, that's the fun thing about this game. Yes, no. Eat me, don't eat me. I mean, both of these could lead... There's no clear answer. Telling him to eat me could lead to a bad ending where, like... He snaps and murders your ass or something. You know, not to do it could lead to a bad ending because you were like, no, and he's like, you don't love me, and then he gets psycho and kills you. I mean, either way, I'm just assuming we're going to die in one of these endings. I'm just going to go for it. Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. We're going to use the guide later, so please just devour me. I had spoken the forbidden words. From the bottom of my heart, I wanted his love. Sister... He pushed down and kissed me hungrily. His arms slid around my waist, and I felt his hot breath against my neck. I mean, uh, did you think you are going to get a kissy CG this soon into the game? Because I didn't. <sighs> then the ribbon binding my wrists came undone, and I wrapped my arms around him. Her hair is, like, so fucking long. As her fingers and legs and tongues intertwined, I could taste the sweet sugar. Sister, you're so delectable. Also, there's some kind of weird-ass kink that he keeps calling you sister. I've been wanting to have you for so long. And you... You wanted me to have you too, right? Yeah. I wanted him just like he wanted me. And as he consumed me, I consumed him back. Like, look at how old-fashioned her dress is and his outfit, but everybody else is like modern fucking day with cell phones. Did we do good or bad? I mean... That seemed a little good, but it could have I mean it was it could have been bad in a good way. I don't know. Mm. I woke to a crackling sound and a weird burnt smell. Gretel? Gretel had vanished. Smoke poured in through the gaps in the walls. Gretel? Gretel! Frightened, I called for Gretel, but he was nowhere to be seen. Oh, oh, okay, we did get a bad ending. <laughs> so that was bad. He's not coming back, you know. It's you. He's thrown himself into the flames. He told you he didn't want to devour you, but you thought only of your own pleasure. So you devoured him. Damn it. I did terrible things. I knew. I knew. I was like, one of these is a bad ending. I should have known the... Um, like, I should have known the... Sure, just say... Like, I should have known, but... Look, we were gonna we were debt bound to get a bad ending pretty fast, so I'm surprised it took this long. He must have been so happy to make love to you. I imagine it was quite emotional. But when he awoke, the despair set in. After all, by establishing that physical connection, he had severed your emotional connection. Are you saying that in this route we wanna bang our brother but we never can? Cause that's just that's cruel, game. That's cruel. <laughs> like, And you were the one who encouraged him to do it. You pushed him in and shut the door behind him. And now I shall do the same for you. Oh my god, the wizard's gonna kill us? Fairy tales mark the end. Did the wizard just fucking burn our asses to death? Bitch, what? Wow! Oh my god. We can just continue here and then just make a different choice. Skip. Um, so let's make the other choice and see what happens. I th think there's two bad endings. Okay, tell him not to! Oh, okay, so I was the one making him suffer as my punishment. Okay. Okay, so those were the same lines. And then, you can't have me... Sister, don't give in to temptation, Gretel. I'll be going hungry, same as you. But... I just... I just want to say... So the game's trying to tell me you can't have an emotional connection and a physical connection. That's kind of bullshit, and I don't appreciate that game. We can have both. Maybe it was too soon. I'll give you that, but... As much as I crave that sugar, I'll hold myself back. And no matter what delicious food you prepare for me, if you're not having any, then neither will I. Sister, I'll be whatever you want me to be. A girlfriend, a friend, a sister. I'll promote myself to any piece on the chessboard. I'll craft your ideal version of me. 
And if you so desire, I'll give you all of me. You're my precious baby brother. You're family, Gretel, and I love you. Right. I couldn't possibly feast on my own sister. That would be... But just then, his hands started to shake, and his breathing grew labored. Did we... Gretel, what's wrong? What? Bad ending. What? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. He hastily jumped out of bed and staggered to the kitchen. There, he grabbed a certain jar I recognized all too well. That's... And this is the candy your brother made just for me. Supposedly, eating it will cure my illness. You know that, right? Apparently, I'm not well. Weird, right? I mean, I feel so healthy. So the star candy is an actual... Well, okay, look. We kind of should have known that, I guess, because... He fed us sedatives and everything, like, and all that stuff, but he was feeding us that candy. But... At the same time, I don't think the candy would be a sedative, because then he would just pass out. It's got to be some kind of, like... I mean, it's drugs, but, like, it's just weird. It has so many uses. He opened the lid, poured out a bunch of random colors, and popped them all into his mouth at once. You're supposed to take them one at a time, Gretel! But he ignored me and swallowed the whole rainbow. I know it's too much, but eating them makes me feel secure. Oh, Gretel. Do you want some? It might help you feel better. Or would you like me to administer them myself, like I did that one time? I quietly shook my head. So you do remember. And here I was trying to help you forget. What a shame. That's what you dosed me with? I looked at the jar. Indeed, these sweet treats are magical and mysterious. If anyone other than me eats them, their memories get muddled. <laughs> Weird, isn't it? Hello, sister. I need you to laugh with me. Haha. <laughs> I let out a dry laugh. I'd always faintly suspected him of drugging me, and now here he was, admitting it flat out. I didn't really know how to feel about it. You're not angry with me? Do you want me to be angry? He fell silent and averted his gaze. He's so sweet and naive. No, I'm not angry. I'm the one who pushed you to do this. Sometimes intentionally, other times inadvertently. It's not like you brought me here against my will. I came here of my own volition, so what's there to get angry about? You always have to coddle me, don't you? I can't help it. I love you. And that's what I'm talking about. You really know how to make me melt. Sister, I want you to depend on me. I want you to need me. Don't let me spoil you until you're utterly, utterly helpless without me. Fine by me. You can lock me up or do whatever you want with me. I mean... I'll love you no matter what. Yeah, she a little cray-cray. And I dig it. I like, I mean, because in a way it's that borderline, but I was talking about like, I want to be the crazy one. I'm going to lock you up. And so she's like, you can lock me up or do whatever you want to me because I love you. When normally we'd be the crazy one. Like, I'm going to, I want you to love me. So I'll lock you up until you do. And we're like, okay. Like, <laughs> All right. <laughs> This route gets crazier as it goes, but I'm enjoying it, I'm not going to lie. The room was dark. With the curtains closed, I couldn't tell day from night. Not only that, but he had taped the edges to the wall, so that not even a sliver of light could get through. In here, it was darker than night, and if I was living in a world cons oh, as if I was living in a world consumed by darkness. Yeah, that should do it. Gretel stood in the center of the darkened room. My eyes hadn't adjusted, so I couldn't see his expression, but his tone was rather upbeat. Oh, and be sure to watch your step when you move around. I wouldn't want you to trip and hurt yourself. Although if you did, I'd just nurse you back to health. Just moments ago, Gretel was crying, but evidently the candy had kicked in, and now he was back to his usual self. Was I meant to feel relieved? Or scared? I could no longer tell what the sane reaction was, 
I was too numb by this point. But it's funny because she has moments. She's like, I'll do whatever you want because I want to love you and I want you to love me. Like, and you're like, she's crazy. And then she's like, huh, feeling, I'm not really sure what the right, and you're like, nope, now she's saying, like, she doesn't need the candy to flip back and forth. He does. But now that I have my memories back, I had a clear understanding of Gretel's objective. As he stated earlier, he wanted to coddle me. He tied me up, cut the heat, and blocked out the light in order to remove my agency and shut out the outside world. That way I would be forced to rely on him to survive. Perhaps the best way to put it was, he wanted to keep me as a pet. A sister. He sat down beside me on the edge of the bed and stroked my hair. It's so funny, he wants to keep you as a pet and he wants you to depend on him and he needs you and he loves you and he wants you. But if you sleep with him, then he's going to just throw himself into the flames and like kill himself because... You don't have an emotional connection anymore. It's fucking weird. It's very, very weird. I'm just going to be a little bit disappointed if we don't get to bone our brother, because that's what we came for. Like, oh, he's our brother. I know he's adopted, but whatever. He's constantly calling us sister. He's got a weird kink. And he wants to devour us, but we can't let him have it, because... I mean... What the hell? Look, if we're going down this train wreck, we're going all out, okay? Like... We're making all the tracks jam up into one and blowing up all these trains. Like, you know, this is not like, whoops, I just popped off the track a little. We going off a cliff, bitch. That bridge is gone. The like, it's all gone. Like, it's like a fiery apocalypse train is what's happening. That's what I want, okay? We gotta go all out. But that was a bad ending. Like, whatever. I mean, we technically got the fiery apocalypse ending, I guess. <laughs> anyway. I moved to rest my head on his shoulder, but stopped myself. Gretel and I weren't lovers. We were only brother and sister. And I had nearly walked right into his trap. Let me know if there's anything you want. We have it all. Milk, hot cocoa, and not to mention sweet treats. Let's live like we're in a fairy tale. Just you and me. Right. Yeah, but in a fairy tale, I wouldn't be trapped in a house with my brother. Again, I don't have a brother, but also, that's not my ideal fairy tale, thank you. With my eyes closed, I couldn't see a thing. But my other senses were heightened, and I could feel him close to me. His happiness was phony. Warped. Twisted. Yeah, because you want to have sex with him, but you can't. So see? She gets it. <laughs> but if it still counted as happiness, then maybe a little twist here and there couldn't hurt. And so we lived happily ever after. The end. I don't think that's actually the end. If only. I was like... I thought back to Gretel's emotional outburst earlier. The way he consumed that candy was abnormal, to say the least. He was clearly exceeding the intended dose. We also have another bad ending somewhere a long way. His shaking and sweating were obviously symptoms of withdrawal. After continued consumption, he had built up a tolerance to it. Thus, he needed to eat more and more to achieve the same effect. And now he had lost control. A familiar story. Gretel's dependence on the sugar had driven him into sweet madness. But is it just sugar? <sighs> your brother made it for me. It's just fucking sugar. Shh. It'll make your brain warp if you eat it. But it's just sugar. Okay. It's fucking weird. Hey, Gretel? I fixed him with a probing look. My eyes had finally adjusted to the darkness, and now I could see not just the outline of his face but his expression as well. What is it? Do you need something? I want a sweet treat. You do? He seemed a bit taken aback. No surprise there, of course. After all, he had only just revealed to me that his treats would muddle my memories. <sighs> okay, then. Any requests? Gretel rose to his feet and headed for the kitchen. As I watched him go, I answered with, I'll eat anything you make. It was something of a stock reply at this point. Because you're going to drug us? In the darkness, Gretel set about making me a sweet treat per my request. But of course, he needed light to see what he was doing, so he had lit an alcohol burner. Meanwhile, I watched his every move. That way he couldn't lace the food without me knowing. But at no point did this seemingly occur. But granted, my view of his hands was limited, and soon the dessert was ready. Here you are. He offered it to me, and I let him put it in my mouth. Context! Phrasing! I mean, I know that's not what we're talking about. I made you a sweet treat. Can I put it in your mouth? 
I, God damn it! I'm sorry. I'm literally sorry if you're actually listening to this and anybody has heard this because they're wondering what the fuck you're listening to, what the fuck I'm reading, and I'm concerned. I made it worse than it really was, but I'm sorry. We were all thinking the same thing, like, Gretel phrasing, Jesus! It chewed slowly, savoring it, and finally swallowed. Yummy. As far as I could tell, it was a sweet treat and nothing more. In fact, I was starting to question whether he'd added anything at all. I told you my treats have the power to muddle your memories, right? Yep. Aren't you scared? No. His lips twisted in a defeated smile. You really drive me crazy sometimes. At this, I knew my suspicions were correct. He hadn't laced my food with anything at all. It was just a dessert. While my memories were indeed hazy in the beginning, that effect had faded over the past few days. His candy was by no means endless. It would run out eventually. Factoring in the amount he used on me, he was going to burn through it very soon. The jar was already at just one-third of its capacity. He probably wanted to conserve as much as possible in order to keep himself stable, so he reduced my allotment to zero. Sugar-free! Zero calories! I could eat as much as I wanted and never, and I'd never go mad! Thing is, Gretel, I love you no matter who you are. Even if I'm a villain? Yep. I mean, you tried to kill those kids, so kind of technically you are a villain a little bit. Or in that case... I mean, I'm also kind of crazy, so... I'll still love you. I answered without a single second of hesitation. You didn't even stop to think about it either. Maybe you're the nutcase. I mean, just a little bit. I smiled in spite of myself. You're just so incredible. You care about me, and you always do your best to look out for me. I couldn't be prouder to call you my brother. Sister. But you shouldn't eat too much candy. Right now, you're in danger of overdosing. You could die, Gretel. I know, but I can't just go cold turkey. Then ease up off them a little at a time. I knew putting him through candy withdrawal would only make him suffer more. But if he reduced his intake little by little, perhaps his body could adapt. Truth be told, he was better off consulting Ryoshi about this stuff, but that wasn't feasible right now. We had sacrificed a lot to come this far. We weren't abandoned by our family. We abandoned them. How is he getting money for food? Oh, I was like, for a second, I was like, was this border always fucking green? Hi, dove! There's a birdie on the patio. He's a big bird. He's a big morning dove out there. You talking to him? Little bird talking to him? He came to say hi. Go on, see him. That's what you got to No, you're not going to. You just, well, he flew away now. He, he waited too long. I was confused for a second because it was green, and then obviously it's because we're Gretel. I was like, was it always green around the border? Crazy. My beloved sister lay asleep beside me. She was all snuggled up against me, possibly due to the cold. I prodded her cheek. She squirmed and let out a tiny groan. I poked her again, and she pulled the covers up over her head. <laughs> I couldn't stop myself from laughing. I dearly loved getting a reaction out of her. And the more I teased her, and the more reactions I'd get. And it made me want to tease her even more. I cupped her cheek in my hand and found her skin colder than I was expecting. Strange, since every part pressed against me was practically on fire. Or was it me that was burning up? I wrapped my arms around her in an embrace. Her slow, rhythmic breaths tickled my neck, and I could feel her chest pressed up against mine. I let out a long sigh. I wanted to touch her perfect, porcelain skin. I wanted to bury my face in her slender neck and kiss her red lips. And this was a trap. I could crush her beneath my feral instincts, but then I'd lose the very thing that mattered to me most. And that was what scared me more than anything else. Dumbass. I whispered in her ear. As I pulled away from her, I was suddenly gripped with frustration and anxiety. So I jumped out of bed and ate some candy out of the jar. I could hear my sister's voice in my head, telling me not to eat them. But I choked down that phantom with the rest of the sugar. <laughs> my flat, emotionless laugh echoed through the quiet room. And then I fell to my hands and knees. Sister. Sister. 
Sister, you're my only family. We may not be related by blood, but you're still my sister. And I can't consume you. With her delectable body, she was practically begging me to do it. But the instant I did, I would lose my sister. What a wicked witch she was. I could never rebel against her. If I tied her up, blinded her, and gagged her mouth, if I took everything from her, would I finally be free? Okay, see, I thought we were going in a love thing, but you, you sound like you kind of hate me a little. Could I keep her as my sister? I looked at the jar next to me. Soon it would be empty. How many days did I have left? I knew full well that this happiness would never last. Right now I could control myself with candy. But what would happen to me once it ran out? Maybe I would stop thinking rationally. Maybe I would turn into a demon and devour my sister. And then maybe you won't care that I'm your sister and it'll be fine. <laughs> I needed to get more candy somehow. And I knew where to find it. But if Ryoshi caught me, he'd take me away from my sister again. Are you going to kill Ryoshi? Sure, I could go without seeing her for a while if I had to. But in the worst case scenario, he might kill me. Either way, I didn't have a choice. I had to do it. Oh, is this the wizard? Why, hello there! Good day to you. Or is it night? It is. <gasps> he appeared practically out of thin air. I glared at him. Here in this dark void, he was only a shadow. This was the witch's familiar. The black cat who had led us here. What do you want? Oh, good grief. Relax, will you? I mean you no harm. I didn't know what he was planning, so I needed to keep my guard up around him. I'm not planning anything. The wizard is merely a pawn, simultaneously the most handy, as well as the most useless. I merely played my part as the witch's familiar, leading you to leading the two of you home. So how's your quarantine with your beloved sister going now that the honeymoon period is over? Are you enjoying the rest of the fairy tale? Oh yes, we're having a gay old time in here. Glad to hear it. I did try to make sure you'd both have all the food and clothing you need, after all. And I granted your other wish, too. Not sure if I remember that. I averted my eyes. Sure you do! Remember what you asked of me? While I'm away, I want you to turn up at the house and tempt her. That sounds nothing like me. Knock it off. So at your request, I revealed myself to her. You know, for someone who claims to love her, you sure don't trust her, do you? You're scared. What if sister abandons me? What if she doesn't need me? So you tested her. You bullied her, pranked her, lied to her. But she didn't leave. I knew I could count on my sister. She's my hero. I'm getting sick and tired of your stupid riddles. What do you want? Spit it out already. Unable to suppress my irritation, I snapped at him. <laughs> Imagine how disgusted your sister would be if she knew the real you. Gretel, were you always this ugly deep down? I like the fact that the wizard is being a bit of a fucking dick to Gretel. Like, he always seemed, like, so nice. I mean, like, obviously he's here to be like, you done fucked up when we get a bad ending. But, like, you know, I have nothing against the wizard. I actually like him. <laughs> But it's really funny, he's like, oh, she's gonna hate you. Like, you're poking the bear, dude. What are you doing? Enough. You act like such a perfect student, but on the inside you're a monster. Not to mention a junkie. A violent, unstable problem child, as a hunter would say. The next thing I knew, I was swinging my fist. Whoa there. But he dodged easily. He should have known the pitch darkness would hinder me. Come now, don't fly off the handle at me. Besides, you might wake your precious elder sister, hmm? I glanced over at her. She hadn't moved an inch. The sight filled me with relief. I let out a long breath and stared into the abyss. I'm too busy to play any more of your little games. Run along home, please because you're worried about running out of candy? 
Oh, Gretel, you poor unloved child. You just wanted something of your own. You wanted to have a fairy tale life with your sister to protect those gleaming jewel eyes from the would-be thieves. My sister is perfect. My sister is beautiful, smart, and competent. She's my role model. I believed in our blood ties. But you were mistaken. When you learned the truth, did you mourn? Or did you se- Shut up! Gretel, if you want me to, I can give you the candy. <laughs> oh my god! Wizard! Are you trying to give my brother the candy or the candy? <laughs> Look, there's just a lot of shit going on in this game and in this route that just everything sounds inappropriate and dirty is all I'm saying. As he spoke, he produced a jar full of candy, seemingly out of nowhere. That's my candy! But it'll come at a price. Give and take, my friend. If you want the goods, you gotta pay. I know that Alice is like kind of the end-all be-all route, right? But I feel like the wizard is... <laughs> Because I feel like the wizard, like, you gotta pay. He's trying to take me away in every route. Like, it's really weird. It felt pointless to ask him how he knew about the candy or where he'd gotten his paws on it. After all, there were bigger questions on the table, such as, why no one had managed to find us. More than a week had passed since we first arrived here. What was everyone else doing? Surely they would have come looking for us by now. And we weren't that well hidden. And yet our only visitor at this far was the wizard. I didn't know what he was planning. What was his goal in letting us take shelter in here? What magic was keeping the rest of the world at bay? Frankly, none of it mattered. Yeah, that's right. I knew he was manipulating me. And I was manipulating him right back. What do you want? I want those gleaming jewels. If you'll give up what you love most, then I'll give you your sweet treat. <gasps> Are you gonna cut out my eyes? Born to a high-class family, I never had to go without. Anything I wanted, I got. Fancy clothes, tasty food, a dazzling reputation and even the warmth of love. But I knew my family's situation was different from the norm. My older sister and I lived in a house in the countryside together, just the two of us. Our parents had their own place in the big city where they worked. Maybe other people would see this as a scandalous way to raise your children, but we were all okay with it, so in my view, it was perfectly fine. Besides, they gave us a hefty allowance and always made sure to visit us a few times per month when they had time off. I didn't resent them. In fact, I was extremely grateful. After all, thanks to them and their prestigious careers, I lived better than the majority of my peers. But though I appreciated them, my connection with them was tenuous at best, and I had no special memories of them. To me, I guess you could say they felt less like parents and more like benefactors. And no surprise there, of course. All the love and discipline a child would normally receive from their parents was instead administered by my sister. She cooked for me. She helped me with my homework. She looked after me. Whenever we shared a dessert, she would always give me the bigger piece. She praised all my smallest accomplishments. She gave me everything I ever wanted. With her around, I didn't miss our parents. My sister was exceptionally gifted. She excelled at everything she tried, and she got top marks in every subject despite seemingly never needing to study. Not only that, but she was beautiful, cheerful, and a social butterfly. She always took center stage. She had the ability to succeed without ever putting any real effort in. To me, she was worth her weight in jewels, and I respected her from the bottom of my heart. I wanted to be in her league, so I struggled to be every bit as perfect as she was. Be it schoolwork or sports, I worked hard to ensure I was number one. I was diligent, composed, and perfectly polite. I was a cut above the rest. And my sister seemed to love this about me. She'd always smile and say, You're so amazing, Gretel. And each time I'd tell myself that I was worthy of her. I thought I clicked, I guess not. Ah, yes. I carry the same blood in my veins. 
I was born to an exemplary family, so clearly I must be exemplary too. That was what I told myself. And then one day, I was strolling down an empty hallway. I had stayed at school later than usual to run an errand for my teacher. I let out a sigh. As a model student, everyone was always turning to me for help. My teachers and classmates were all totally helpless without me. I couldn't stand it. I wasn't completely miserable here at the school, but I was growing tired of it. Ideally, I wanted to attend college with my sister. I wanted to sit in the same classroom with her, listen to the same lectures as her, attend the same events as her, and walk to and from school with her. I knew it was a pipe dream, of course, but it was by no means impossible to achieve. And as long as there was even the tiny chance, I couldn't let go. I wanted nothing more than to go home, eat my sister's cooking, and have her help me with my homework. As I passed by a classroom, however, I caught a whiff of the world's most nauseating scent. Instantly, my good mood was spoiled, and I let out another sigh. One of the other students was smoking a cigarette. He was a notorious delinquent who spent his time running with the wrong crowd instead of attending school. Riffraff, if you ask me. I didn't want to interact with him, but we had already made eye contact, so I didn't have a choice. Are you even old enough to be smoking those? At my question, he exhaled a cloud of smoke, dropped a cigarette to the floor, and crushed it under his heel. This infuriated me, but I limited myself to just a glare. Not wanting to get involved any further, I hastily packed up my things so I could get away from him. Then I heard him snicker. I heard you're not really related. Huh? Everybody knows it. You were adopted. But they still let you live with your sister unsupervised, huh? A guy and a girl living under the same roof? Well, chicka wow well. I mean, that's what we were hoping for, but then Gretel goes and kills himself. So, I mean, like, we're not lo we're pretty much losing here. <sighs> Instantly, I felt a murderous impulse flare up, and I quickly thought better of it. I couldn't stoop to this idiot's level. Not yet. I had more self-respect than that, and better things to do with my free time. Well, he only stoops to that guy's level when he hurts me, so, I mean, that's noble, I guess? I couldn't stop my hands from falling into fists. And then as I kept my back turned, he said something he really shouldn't have. Oh, this is probably the kid that he attacks. Okay. I bet you jack off to your sister's naked body every night, don't you? Sick freak. Before I even knew what I was doing, I hurled a chair in his direction. Excuse me? Want to say that again? The moment he flinched, I dove at him. We both crashed to the ground, taking some desks with us, and I climbed on top of him and punched him again, and again, and again. With each blow, there was a dull thud as the impact made my whole arm tingle. S stop Bleeding profusely from his broken nose, he begged for mercy, but it was too little, too late. I was going to make sure he never made a comment like that ever again. That's enough! The next thing I knew, a teacher rushed in and put me in a full Nelson. Meanwhile, the creep who had insulted me and my sister is now crying and bleeding all over the place. How pathetic. Normally, he acted like he was so much better than these authority figures, but now here he was begging for their help. Fortunately, I could still move my feet, so when he reached his hand out, stomped down on it mercilessly. As his scream echoed through the empty classroom, I thought to myself, Serves you right. Gretel's a psychopath, but I kind of fucking love it. I'm so terribly sorry. The school contacted not my sister, but my older brother. Since our parents lived out of town and he was the oldest, he was listed as the primary point of contact. But I didn't like him very much at all. Unlike our parents, he worked locally. And although he didn't live with us, he still occasionally turned up on our doorstep to criticize our lifestyle. And unlike our sweet, thoughtful sister, he was cold and distant with me. Frankly, I found him highly unpleasant to be around. He was a hindrance to my happy life with my sister. He smacked me over the head and told me to apologize to my victim, his parents, and the teachers. He clearly didn't care about my feelings whatsoever. But if my sister were here, she would have asked me why I did what I did, and then she would have stood up for me. Suspended for two weeks. That was my punishment. 
but I didn't really object to this decision. While he was the one who started it, I clearly let my emotions get the better of me. That much I sorely regretted. If I was going to cross that line, I could have done a lot better. I could have made sure no one would find out about it. That way I wouldn't have been punished at all. He is fucking crazy. But alas, it was too late. My only option was to avoid making the same mistake in the future. Besides, if I was going to be stuck at home, it would mean more time to spend with my sister. This was a much more efficient use of my time compared to wasting it on these idiots at school, and I couldn't ask for anything more. While I was at home, I could get ahead on all my schoolwork. That'd show them. Suddenly, I was brimming with motivation. But right as I tried to go home to my sister, a demon stepped into my path. I see you're smiling. What's so funny? <laughs> Nothing. You hurt someone today. You do regret your actions, right? Of course. Look, Gretel. What is it? Gretel, I think you need some time to cool down. Excuse me? Wh what's that supposed to mean? My brother sighed and shook his head. According to him, wailing on an opponent who couldn't fight back was problematic behavior. Personally, I thought skipping school, smoking in the classroom, and sexual harassment were all far, far more problematic than anything I had done. So I told him that. But my brother stubbornly refused to acknowledge my opinion. He tried to claim that I lacked ethics and morals. Then he tried to take me not to the house where my sister was waiting for me, but some cabin in the woods. He was always, always like this. He didn't treat me like a little brother. He treated me like a crazy person. I mean, right now we're acting like a crazy person, but like, whatevs. Semantics. We've already run it past our parents. What about sister? I haven't told her. I already know she'd be against it. Once again, my sister was the only person I could trust. But she wasn't here. The demon grabbed my arm and tried to drag me away. No! Let me go! Let me go! Come in with me, Gretel. No! I don't want to go! Gretel! As I struggled, my sister turned up right in the nick of time. My savior. My holy mother. Sister! Help me! Please help me! I reached out to her, but the demon ripped us apart. Let me out of here! Let me out, goddammit! The demon locked me up in a stark white room. No matter how much I pounded on or kicked the door, it refused to budge. I want to go home! And my sister, she's waiting for me! But no matter how much I screamed, no one came to save me. Stop! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Instead, they forced me out of my street clothes into a hospital gown and belted my arms and legs to the bed. Don't touch me! Sister! Sister! I don't want to scream too loud, I'm sorry. Save me. It was humiliating. Every waking moment was supervised and micromanaged. I'm not crazy! When I tried to protest by refusing to eat my food, I ended up with an IV in my arm. Ugh, I hate this. Sister! Under the effects of the medicine, I slowly lost the energy to fight or even think. This is so terrible. Like, you feel so bad for him! The next day, my parents came to visit. After a long, harsh lecture about violence, they gave me a hug, but I felt nothing. No matter what pretty words they had to offer me, it didn't change the fact that they had consented to me being locked up in here. They had abandoned me. I mean, I could see if you had a history of violent behavior, but like, I mean, you got a little, I mean, you broke the kid's nose, but it's not hard to break a nose, man. Like one punch the wrong way. And like, for God's sakes, you could like kill someone by punching them in the nose. Like, bone into your skull like I don't know I don't punch people but like you know what I mean and kids get in fights all the time is it wrong yes but does that necessarily mean that if two kids one kid insults the other kid and somebody punches someone that you punch someone violence isn't the answer we gotta put you in an asylum for like a week that's fucking great like obviously it's because they think you're like, he's been a little stark or a little weird and a little creepy. And like, you know what I mean? It's like something else, but it, it's like, it, it's not just the punching the fuck out of that kid, you know? 
it was a little extreme. One big punch in the face probably would have done it. It was the excessive violence. But still, this is a little extreme for that. Oh, I'm Zion. They had abandoned me. When they asked me if I needed anything, they said I wanted to see my sister. But this wish was not granted. Sister, 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 sister. She was the only person on this earth who truly cared about me. She understood me. She was my only family. And at this rate, it was possible I would never see her again. I wanted to avoid that at any cost. But how could I get home? Eventually, I decided I would pretend to obey them. I swallowed everything they gave me and never disobeyed. Everything I did, all of it was for sister. I looked down at the pills in my hand and imagined they were candies for my beloved sister. No matter how disgusting they tasted, I would happily eat a gift from her. We're gonna have to stop here, because, like, we're at time. And I know we're not quite... Like, we should kind of continue this a little bit. Like, we're in a weird spot here. It, is, it was the, a slight transition. It's still... He's in the asylum and locked up. But, like, we are going to stop and we'll finish Gretel's kind of story. Well, not really finish. His, well, maybe. I don't know how long it's going to be in his perspective. But we'll at least get a little more closure on this in the next part. So, I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up. And subscribe to see more.